Oh, welcome into the Fantasy Football Forge. My name is Steve, and um, it is time for the top 10 running back bust. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Steve, how could it be the top 10 when you have an 11 over, over on the side there? Um, well, I was going to give you a bonus sleeper, but or bonus bust pick here, but um, actually I had to remove one from the list. So I have already made some updates to the rankings. Hopefully I represent everything accurately here. I make notes to myself sometimes, and I, sometimes I don't end up carrying it over to these. I think I've got them covered, but uh, in case I screwed up something, I will, uh, of course, just uh, make note of that along the way. Now, uh, at the end of the video, uh, well, before we get to that, first of all, if you, if you didn't know, I, I, I have released a rankings video for the running backs earlier this week on Monday. So go check out that video. Please um, like, comment, subscribe on this video as well. Help that. The algorithm has been uh, hating me this year. In addition to that, if you're just kind of starting to get into fantasy football again and you missed it, I did release rankings videos of the wide receivers and the quarterbacks already, as well as the sleepers videos and the bus videos for each of those. Did I say wide receivers and running backs? Um, these are the running backs we're doing right now. I did the wide receivers first, and then I did the tight ends last week. And next week, we're going to go through the quarterbacks as we start to get into uh, doing some mock drafting here, some some best ball drafts, some regular drafts. We'll just start to, to test the waters of these things and really see how we can work around the draft, what's working, what's not working for us. And with that being said, um, and I'll, I'll probably, I think I'm going to start doing that live on uh, Thursday nights, I think will be the plan. So plan on, on coming and saying hello. Um, with that out of the way, end of the video, make some channel announcements. I guess I can start to include that in those announcements that, uh, that Thursday night live will be here um, ne next week, Thursday night. Let's plan on it. Those channel announcements do include a listeners-only league, a members-only league. So if you have any interest in that, check out the announcements for sure at the end of the video. And also, if you're not interested in any of that, uh, you know the last two, three minutes of this video are not for you, and you can head out then. But let's get on to the, the fun stuff here with my number 11, number 10, uh, biggest bust who's going to be Chuba Hubbard. The experts have him ranked at, uh, what is that, 42 average consensus. I have him ranked 63rd, 21 spots lower than the experts. Expert consensus from uh, Fantasy Pro's website at the time. These were the rankings. I haven't really seen them change over the last couple of weeks, so if they did do some kind of major update recently, uh, my apologies. But uh, up until just several days ago, these were still the case. When it comes to Chuba Hubbard, I have consistently and always been the low man on Chuba Hubbard, and I don't think that that has ever hurt me or my reputation. If anything, it should have helped it. He was, you know, let's let's take into account how he performed last year when he was the starter of the worst team in the league. He was the EV running back 32. This year, he's not even going to be the starter, maybe for like a couple of weeks, best case scenario. Um, and even then, like, uh, I don't know how much we're expecting this offense to improve, especially if Tuba Hubbard's out of the running back. So it just, it seems ridiculous to me to be taking him uh, too highly in the drafts. I'm, I'm not too excited about him at all, if you can't tell. So I, I don't know what we are doing drafting one of the backup running backs for one of the worst teams in the league to me no thanks like i'm good i'll pass up on that unless i'm in a really deep league that's gonna bring us on to my running back nine on this list ty chandler who i have 16 spots lower than the experts the experts have him ranked 45th i'm ranked 61st and this is basically the same thing that i said about chuba hubbard aaron jones is now in town for the minnesota vikings his health is a bit of a concern, so I could see holding Ty Chandler up as a higher-end backup option if you wish to. I, I could understand that, but Minnesota's offense is not really one that I care to target the backup of for this coming season. Uh, rookie quarterback coming in there, most likely a situation. I'm just, I know they have Justin Jefferson, but after that, I don't know... Uh, that they have a whole lot. T.J. Hawkins is going to be missing some time and everything. So especially early on in the year, like I, I'm just not too excited to be holding on to Ty Chandler. Pick him up after uh, several weeks when when Aaron Jones is more likely to start to get injured. So bring us on to my number eight 
bust running back who I have ranked 51st overall. That's 12 spots lower than the experts, which means that the experts have him ranked 39th overall. You know, as, as far as Zach Charbonnet goes, I, I think he's a fine backup option. I don't have any real issues with that. I could see myself ranking him up to about seven spots higher, so into the mid-40s-ish or so. Uh, when all is said and done. But once again, there are other players and offenses that I'm just more interested in taking a chance on reaping the rewards from uh, of holding a guy who I don't think is going to be fantasy viable un- unless or until there is an injury. That's going to bring us on to uh, Gus Edwards, who I have ranked uh, 43rd overall. Oh, let's get Gus up here. So I have ranked 43rd overall. That's eight spots lower than the ECR. ECR running back 35. If Gus is going to end up being the de facto running back one for the Los Angeles Chargers, then we're probably all too low on him. Eight spots is exactly the amount of spots between himself and the running back atop the tier that I have Gus in. So, uh, (coughs) you know, I I still understand the argument essentially is what I'm saying to have him up there as like the RB 35, 36. This is just kind of how the cookie crumbled for my rankings. In another universe, I could have argued him to the top of that tier that I had him in and ranked him as the RB35 and been just perfectly in line with the ECR. So I'm not kind of making any kind of uh, big proclamations here of Gus Edwards being some sort of massive bus at running back 35. I just don't quite agree with it. And by the numbers, he ended up being my uh, seventh biggest bust of um this so far in the off season based on where he's going that's gonna bring us on to devin singletary who i have seven spots lower than the experts so the experts have him ranked 32nd that should mean and i have him ranked um 38th apparently which actually means there's a difference of six spots i'm pretty sure that this what i'm looking at is more up to date than what i did over there so uh, a difference of six i have him ranked 38th overall ecr 32 and um, I guess I've moved them up my rankings maybe a couple of times by a little bit. So I gave rookie Tyrone Tracy a sizable amount of work and second-year running back Eric Gray a little bit of relief work, which ended up eating into this Devin Singletary workload. This does feel a little bit low to me. I will probably sneak him up slowly, a little bit closer to a high, you know, uh, being uh, worthy of being like a, a running back one draft pick or an RB one of a team and where they should get drafted as roughly one of the top 32 to 35 maybe running backs that's going to bring us on to my running back uh five here for the top 10 bus brian robinson jr i have him six spots higher than the ecr the ecr in him is running back 30 i have him ranked 36th so i'm just going to kind of read my note here because it's pretty well uh written out here the dual threat running back role austin eckler's role is very important to this cliff kingberry offense now he did employ a strong rushing attack while he was in Arizona, Cliff Kingsbury while he was in Arizona, but I expect that Brian Robinson's role will not be enough to provide a safe or high enough floor, and he'll be too touchdown dependent to trust. Why can't we trust that touchdown dependency? Well, he'll be on an offense that's going to be run by a rookie quarterback. Plenty of concerns there as to how good this offense might end up being, so those rushing touchdown opportunities will probably, most likely, be limited compared to many other rushing back opportunity, running back rushing up touchdown opportunities around the league. Plus, the rushing quarterback could vulture some of those rushing touchdown opportunities as well. He's going to have to compete with Jaden Daniels quite possibly once they come within 10 yards of the end zone. I think that he'll be a good real-world running back for this Washington Commander's offense, but I am doubtful that it's going to be enough for fantasy football, and that is why I have him pushed back a little bit in my rankings as a top-five bust. That's going to bring us on to my number four bust here in Nuck Chubb. You can see I moved Jalen Warren up enough in my rankings that he's no longer uh, warranted being one of the busts, but Nick Chubb still is. I have him as my running back uh, 34, seven spots. Um, I think he's actually my running back 35, seven spots lower than the ECR because I think Jalen Warren jumped him. So uh, ECR on him is running back 28. The expectation based on his most recent surgery is that he'll be back about midseason and no sooner than that. And that's a long time to wait on him. And even once he's back, will he be the same old Nick Chubb? I don't know. The first week that he's back, he'll almost certainly be limited. And so you won't be able to start him that week. Then, or you know, you'll also think that he's going to be limited going into it. So you uh, highly 
high chance that you'll be strongly doubting starting him that week, regardless of how he ends up doing that week. You won't get most likely get the benefit of it if he does well. Then you'll struggle to trust starting him in week two because he probably will have been limited. And now it's how much of that workload will he, uh, will they release to him in just that one week? Will he still be highly limited in week two? And um, how much more? Yeah. So then if he has a bad game, you're going to sit him in week three, even if he got that workload. Now it was a bad week. So uh, yeah, he, maybe he's just not the same old chub. He got some other opportunities uh, some other guys you just can take a chance on instead of him on your roster. And that brings us on to week four, where he'll probably go off and he'll be on your bench. And now you're like, well, what the heck? I'm saying you're setting yourself up for a lot of uh, heartbreak if you draft Nick Chubb, possibly glory. Uh, but I'm just a little bit less optimistic about it. It's con- like I'm not drafting him as a top 30 running back and holding on to him for that long. Um yeah, that's all that it comes down to. That's going to bring us on to my number three bust, top bust uh, running back here, my running back 31, Ramondre Stevenson, who I have uh, 12 spots higher. So I think I'm, I think he moved back to my running back 32, now 12 spots lower than the ECR, ECR running back 20. As far as Ramondre Stevenson goes, I could be a little bit low on him. I could be feeling a little bit jaded by him from last year uh, and his performance. I was very, very high on him last year. Got that wrong. Maybe I'll get it wrong again this year, but to be honest, like I, even if I am a little bit wrong, how much am I really missing out on? I don't know that this upside is, is anything too fantastic based on what we saw last year. So, I don't know. I have hesitancies. Um, I will probably look to rank him a little bit higher, but I know I've tried to, uh, looking into that already once, and, and I didn't end up moving him higher. So, um, I, I'll need a little bit of convincing before we get there. Now we're going to get to a couple of guys who I'll need less convincing about, starting off with my uh, top bust number two here in Devon A. Chan, and it breaks my heart. It really does. But this is where the experts have him compared to where I have him. It's not that I think anything poorly of Devon A. Chan. I absolutely love the talent. Uh, and you know I'm not lying if you paid attention to my stuff last season. He's my running back 21 currently ranked. That's uh, eight spots lower than the ECR. ECR has him at running back 13. Uh, drafting Jalen Wright to me says a whole lot about the views of this team. Uh, they don't trust the health of A. Chan. Uh, they might not totally trust the health of Raheem Mostert. And to me, that means that they're not going to be giving A-Chan a full workload. It's not that they're not going to be giving him opportunities week in and week out. It's just that I don't think that they're going to be giving him 14-plus uh, opportunities week in and week out, more like 10 maybe touches a week, which it's not like that's not enough to produce with, but you do have to be highly efficient, which once again, uh, probably the most efficient running back we've ever seen performance, uh, at least through like the first half of last season was Devon Achan. And so it's, you know, it can be done. We know that in this offense with this player, we know that much. However, there's also a very likely chance that he's just incredibly boom or bust with that kind of limited work. It's just not enough to statistically rely upon. I could be wrong with the touches per game, which would, of course, mean that I am too low on him. But if I'm right on that, then I stand by why I have him ranked here. And I, you know, I'm reading the tea leaves on what I think is the scenario here. So if you agree with me on the touches, then I think that you should agree with me to some extent on not having him, you know, being your 13th best running back, at least. Maybe you don't quite agree with me at 21. Uh, but... I'm just, you know, I'm a, I'm hesitant to be drafting him that highly. That's for sure. That's going to bring us on to another guy who I am hesitant on, Derrick Henry, who I have ranked 17th. That means I am eight spots lower than the ECR in him as well. Uh, ECR is um, quarter, uh, running back nine on him. And when you look at Derrick Henry's numbers from last year, he was the EV equalized value running back 21 on the season. That's a lot like average fantasy points per week, but it takes consistency into account. And it took a lot for him to get there. He had the most volume in the league. He received the most carries per game out of any running back in the league. And he also had a lot of touchdowns. He was sixth most in the league with his total touchdowns of uh, 12 per game. And he relied on those two factors to go a long ways 
last season. The touchdowns could even go up this year. I, I understand that. I'm not going to lie. Gus Edwards had 13 last year, and he finished as the EV running back 28, though. So it's not like just having those touchdowns will get you all the way there either. <laughs> no, Derrick Henry, Gus Edwards, two different types of talents. One of them's actually, you know, supposed to be the starter of this team, too. So I'm just lying a little bit more... I, I'm, I'm, I don't know that he's number one in the carries per game anymore. I don't know that he has that same volume. He's another year older. I'm expecting him to possibly be less of a king as he's been, and I think we saw that a little bit last year. I just I do have concerns. This is not the same you know, uh, offense that this offense was uh, prior to last year in terms of how reliant they are on the running game. We've got Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell both were more efficient last year than Derrick Henry was on a per run basis. So I do expect them to limit Derrick Henry's role in this season if for no other reason than to have him as fresh as possible for the playoff run because they expect they're a Super Bowl hopeful team. They expect to be there at the end of the season if they don't expect to be there at the end of the season. They're, I don't know, you know, why not? They, they have enough talent on this roster that that's their goal. Their goal is to win a Super Bowl Derrick Henry's definitely a part of that goal. Now, what I will say, Keaton Mitchell, going to be missing some time. So there's a little bit, especially early on in the season, especially when they need those wins and they don't have the ability to maybe rest on their laurels a little bit and give him a little bit of a breather, being Derrick Henry. But I do think that as the season goes along, you're going to see Derrick Henry less carries, you know, not the number one carries per game uh, per in the league, not as efficient as many running backs on a per carry basis, but maybe, maybe he is quite efficient because, you know, we got a different offensive line here. We got uh, uh, more threats outside of Derrick Henry himself. That should help his efficiency too. So I, I, I understand that I can make counter arguments for all this stuff. I very well may be too low on him at running back 17, and I will be looking to move him up in short order, but I do not see myself putting a 30-year-old running back with over 25,000 rushing yards since high school, 12,000 yards plus 3,600 yards plus 9,500 yards. That's college um, pros, college, and before college. A lot, lot of rushing yards on this guy. I'm just, you know, I'm willing to be a little bit low on it and let him defy the odds. That said, um, he might feel, you know, a year younger on a new team. We see this often, oftentimes rejuvenates an older guy who might be starting to be on their downturn. They have like this one year uprise on their new teams. And so I'm not really trying to, if you want to draft Derrick Henry as the top 10, you know, as a top 10 running back, I'm not trying to prepare convince you otherwise but there are the the reasons why he might not achieve top 10 greatness this year and why i'm going to be a little bit lower on him and probably not get him in every draft but i definitely want some exposure to derrick henry no doubt about that in this ravens offense please Uh, i love derrick henry i was i was out there asking uh in on reddit forums uh to tennessee fans why the heck he wasn't the starting running back um a year or two before he actually ended up getting that starting role. Like, like what, are, what is your coaching staff doing here? So, big fan. It's a shame. The list has a lot of guys that I like on it. But, uh, tis what it is. Got to go by what I'm, I'm assuming for the season. So, that is it. Um, announcements here for the channel. If you want to become a member, 99 cents. And if you want to join the uh, Listener's League, that's how you do it. Become a member. On the, uh, you'll get a password to a Discord server. On the Discord server, just go down to the, the channel that's titled something like hashtag 2024 uh, fantasy football draft or whatever. Um, it's pretty clear which one it is. Go down there and just say that you are interested. And when we get enough people, we'll create a league and set up a drafting date. And if there's not enough people, we'll do something. Uh, you know, we'll try to figure something out uh, as a group. And then, um other other benefits that you get from being a member you get access to the equalized value charts from the 2023 season if you're not familiar equalized value is a system that i created 
that looks at numbers in the same way of average fantasy points per week. However, it takes consistency into account. There's some math that goes into it that re readjusts those numbers a little bit. And that little bit ends up being more accurate to determining how often, how likely on a weekly basis these guys are to help you win that week. Uh, and it does a better job than the average fantasy points per week statistic, which I think is the best basic statistic that you can just find out there. Um, so I really, really like the equalized value. I think it's very valuable. And currently in the off season, if you like to do a lot of your homework, it's a good reminder of how well and how not well some guys might have actually performed last season compared to where your memory might lie on them. And also up on there, if you are interested in getting standard format, non-PPR rankings or full PPR rankings, you're going to need to let me know. There is a channel uh, for each of those. Just let me know which one it is that you want. Go into that channel. Just let me know that you have interest in um, those types of rankings, and I will get those out for you and, and for anybody else um, who is of interest uh, thanks to you. So be the be a champion of the people and do that for them all right that's it thank you thank you very very much guys uh and ladies and gentlemen i appreciate you all and i will see you next week with the quarterbacks and we'll start to once again reminder reminder live thursday night making that official we will start to do some uh drafting stuff and just keeping up with the most recent news and and saying hello and i guess like a little q a maybe uh throughout the stream so there you go Peace out.